the first thing we are going to understand in physics is about motion and its causes if you look at world around you you will find stationary objects like trees buildings books and tables which stays at the same position with time until some external force move them though i have not defined what exactly is force but you get the idea on the other hand you see an object which changes in their position over time some move in a straight line some move in a curve some object may not change their position but their orientation may change and rotate like your ceiling fan all these are examples of different types of motion we see so many complex forms of motion like feet of a walking man our hands when we write or even a boy playing with a ball in a moving car but can we really understand all of it physicists are smart people they always try to break down and simplify a seemingly difficult phenomena so that learners like us can understand them to understand motion it's broken into two different types translation and rotation motion translation is again broken down into three independent single dimensions for easier analysis all types of motion we can think of is combination of these two types of motion a, a car moving on a road is undergoing translation motion but if you look closer its wheel is undergoing a combination of rotation and translation let's just talk about translation motion now and that too along a straight line this special oversimplified form of motion is called rectilinear motion our first task is to quantify different features of a body in motion like its position speed etc with time relative to its origin of a coordinate axis we call these quantities as state variables because they define any particular state of motion of a body position becomes the distance of a body from the origin all the positions on the right direction is considered positive and left direction is considered negative why is the idea of direction important in considering position suppose i give you only the distance of a point from the origin and ask you to go there what will you do i will ask for in which direction of course look at these two points they are at the same distance from the origin but they are at different position hence the direction is important because we are only considering one dimension we have only two directions to worry about which we can easily denote using positive and negative sign next is displacement let's talk about how does this position of a body changes over a period of time so if this is your position and i say you are displaced by this amount what will be your position this right mathematically we can say displacement is change in position but isn't it like distance with a direction kind of but not exactly you might have effectively displaced from your position but during the time interval you might have taken a path like this the displacement term will not capture what you have done or what path you have taken during this period of time it only concerns the initial and final position whereas distance is the length of actual path traced by the moving body and it never has a sign so if i go back my displacement will reduce but my distance will be added even if i change my direction cool now that we have quantified position and displacement we will talk about speed or rate with which the motion is taking place net displacement per unit time is defined as average velocity again notice that it is not capturing how the body was moving was it moving at the same velocity or had it slowed down or sped up in between but then isn't that information important yes it is the best way to capture all the ideas about a motion is to use a graph here we can find the position of the body at any time so here itself i can find the difference between the position and also the average velocity right look at this slope basically the slant of this slope gives you the idea about the velocity higher the slope greater is the speed direction of slope would give you the direction of velocity so like we defined the rate of change of position can we define 
the rate of change of velocity yes we can but for that we have to know the velocity of body at the initial and final instance but what we have found here is average velocity next we will talk about instantaneous velocity